What an absolute embarrassment, lads and lasses. How's it going, everybody? It's the Flying Pig here on Flying Pig United with another little transfer news and Man United Roundup news video for you of the day. Still absolutely feeling like filth after that disgusting performance and result yesterday, which was one of the most embarrassing in, in living memory, in all fairness, getting drubbed up against fucking Brentford. We're going to cover all the latest reaction to that and also the latest news and transfer goings on, etc. in this video. So uh, do us a favour at the start of this stream, smash that like button on it, give it a raw like, give it a thumbs up. Also share it around on social media if you want as well. Give it a cheeky little retweet out there, you know it makes sense. And um, get yourself subscribed if you're new to the channel. Get down below with your thoughts and opinions about all the stuff and all the latest goings on. With Manchester United, with your thoughts, get yourself involved in the live chat with these legends like Chris Swift and United Forever, Pedro Sanchez, Tad Bates, Rosh Mano, Jamie Todd, Obizzy the Beast, Arsenal Manic, Julian, Pal Marius, Phantom Nat, Johnny M, Gav Dog, Jamie Todd, Simple Jack, great to see you bud, how you doing there my son, David Hodgie, Madhouse Jack, Scujo One, Gunshi, Jonathan Gallagher, Fire Up, Gav Dog, John Adair, Kingslayer, Julian, Neil Duffin, and everybody, thank you so much for joining us, yep, do twat that like button and hit the subscribe and get yourself in throughout the show, we will be dipping in and out the chat, and we'll have a big Q&A at the end, Neil Duffin says, Piggy, it's been coming, we've won three of the last 16 games, Disgusting, mate. Seven games lost on the bounce as well, away from home. You fucking what, mate? Absolute disgusting form. I agree, mate. Absolutely abysmal. Um, Elfane Kadili says, Glazers out oil money in like Man City and PSG. Well, we don't even need the oil money part. It would be nice to have some super rich sugar daddy like Jeff Bezos or like an Elon Musk or somebody like that to come in. Or even some, you know, oil baron or something with a billion jabillion in the bank. But we don't even need that. We just need these Glazer shithouses out. Ideally, for me, the best thing would be if we can have some sort of, I don't know, consortium of fan ownership. I know that's unbelievably... Um, what? Didn't understand that. Shut up, Samsung. Anyway, so uh, some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, fan ownership would be the best scenario because let's face it, this club is such a well-supported, hugely commercially successful club that we can generate hundreds of millions a year just by being, just by being Manchester United and for the fan base being amazing and supporting the team. And uh, as long as we actually invested all of that back into the team, it would be a self-sustaining giant. But unfortunately, with the Glazer shithouses here, all they do is suck money out of this football club. And um, and they've got us into this situation now where the, the standards of this club are what they are now, where we've got a bloody tree trunk as our captain, um, where we've just been spending awful amounts of money on awful bang average players for a long, long time now, really. The recruitment's been bad. The people in charge of making key football decisions have been bad. Anybody who steps out of line just gets sacked off. If you're not a Glazer puppet, you don't get to be in, in this football club, it seems, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, so, you know, there's, it, it, let's face it, Ralph Ranglick said it how it was. He got sacked off. Jose Mourinho, as soon as he started speaking out, he got sacked off. Um, so, you know, we've got to have yes men in these in this club, unfortunately. They do it for the Glazers. And um, unfortunately, there's just, just so, so much money that these Glazers make out of this football club that they're not going to relinquish their grubby little hands on this football club anytime soon. Hey, thank you for the super chat there, Dan Ladd. He's got a 199 super chat of a superhero in there. That's what we need, mate. We need some sort of super legend superhero to come and save us out of this mess, my friend. Oh, my goodness, because we need Superman. The Glazers are a freaking kryptonite in this football club. They're destroying us. It's a disgrace and a nonsense. Roy Keane would be throwing punches at these guys um, if he could, because they're just <laughs> running this football club into the ground, aren't they? Um, OK, so, you know, let's face it. We can blame the players and Ten Hag, I, I guess, for the performance yesterday a little bit. Of course, the players mainly. Let's just talk about Ten Hag for a second, because a lot of people are saying he's a flop. He's a bad appointment. He's a bad manager. He's not ready for the Premier League and all this stuff. I mean, I, can't, I don't really share that opinion really just yet. I mean, he's only had two professional games, two competitive games in the Premier League here. They, we have shat the bed in them, and he has made a lot of the same old gastastic mistakes that all the previous managers made, i.e. selecting Slabo Maguire. Anybody who thinks Slabby Maguire as your captain is a good idea is already down minus 10 notches for me. So that's a big problem. And then what he's done with Shotty McShotbag, Tomini as well, playing him in the first game and then bringing him off the bench, having the audacity to bring him off the bench yesterday when we needed to make something happen. Go in a turn to Scotty McScottbag. Unbelievable. But um, And also late substitutions. His in-game management's been in question in those first two games. His selection's been gash. The tactics have been non-existent. We got done 2-1 by Brighton and dropped up 4-0 by Brentford, guys. You can't say that Ten Hag's done well in 
in those first couple of games, can you? But what you can say is that he has got an absolute rotten to the core set of absolute complete meltbags who are not Manchester United players. And most of them, bar maybe a few, are literally not up to the standard of being Manchester United players. So he is up, uh, up against it, really. I mean, Ragnick was right. We needed open heart surgery. We needed 10 new sign-ins. The Glazer shit houses didn't want to deliver that. And so, you know, let's face it, our recruitment team, our scouting network, it's gash. We never sign the right players whenever we need to. They always end up going to other clubs. We're even being linked with Moises Caicedo now. We could have had him for a couple of million. Last year, when he was offered to us, then we didn't bother because we're a bunch of shit houses. You know, this is like, even then, that's not even the answer anyway. I'm just saying there's so many players we've missed out on because of bad recruitment. They've gone for individuals that are maybe not the right people. I'm not saying the ones we signed this summer. And let's face it, Ten Hag's gone and basically had to go off his own shopping list. He's not allowed to, he's not actually been having any gems plucked out for him by anybody else. It's all off Ten Hag's shopping list, these players that we've signed. I don't criticise Ten Hag's signings yet, I don't criticise him. He's only just come in, yes, Lissandro Martinez did perform like he was, uh, uh, you know, in the circus uh, yesterday. But it's not really, it, he's, he's a short individual, maybe he'd be best at CDM. It's tough in the Premier League, well maybe that's just one game. You know, but the whole team performed to a gas standard. Um, even players like David De Gea, who have been so so uh, significantly consistent for us over a long time, was absolutely abysmal yesterday. The whole team was awful to a man. There's not any redeeming player out there. They all performed like an absolute bunch of clowns. And um, yeah, Ten Hag's definitely got his work cut out for himself to try and get this team of gashos to perform anywhere near the standard where we need to be to challenge for top four. I mean, can you imagine if we lose to Liverpool, guys? I mean, what happens in the next two games? Who have we got after that? I think, isn't it Southampton and Leicester? Those are not winnable. Those are those are those are easily you know, losable games as well, guys. For this Manchester United team, right now, I mean, could you imagine a scenario where Manchester United are just a few games into the season and already Champions League top four is gone? I mean, that's that's what's facing us right now, guys. If we lose to Liverpool, which, let's face it, this current United side, we can hope that they turn up and have a, a wonder game. But they're shite. They're not expected to really do the business, are they? So that's going to be a tough one. Then a couple of really tough fixtures after that as well for, for this United side. So I'm really concerned about where we're at in a couple of games' time. We could already be out of the race. This could be a completely abysmal season. We're 20th in the fucking league, guys. We're rock bottom. It doesn't get any gasher than this after two games. So um, we, we just got to hope that Ten Hag does do some wonders and does actually show himself to be a really good coach. He's got really bad players. We also expect some sort of a reaction from our absolutely awful owners. Let's get a hashtag Glazers out in the live chat. Pal Marius, thanks for your super chat, lad. He says, F the board, the owners and the players. Back Eric Ten Hag. Well said, dude. There's two common denominators I see running throughout the last few seasons. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer actually did a really good job to knee guys. Let's just, let's just put a hashtag 20 legend in the live chat there for Oli. Okay, it all went to shit in the end. We can probably understand why, because of the gashed players we've got in our team. But he still managed to get third and finish above Liverpool in second one season and get to Europa League final with a bunch of freaking gashed merchants. So in all fairness, on in hindsight, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, Oli kind of didn't do half bad, really, did he? Um, but in terms of, like, who's here now, the common denominators, the players, most of them anyways, a few new guys, but the, the, the players are what's the common theme running throughout the last few seasons. And the board, and the owners, the owners, the gash owners, hashtag Glazer, out and hashtag players out in all fairness if only we had an ambitious board who would be prepared to spend money because I would love to completely rebuild this football team this summer and get rid of about six players and sign six new in but unfortunately they don't want to do that because they don't want to spend Oh, let me just catch up with the chat, guys. Let me just catch up with the chat here, folks. Um, thank you so much to you all for being here. Oh, Busy the Beast says he's a puppet for the Glazers. Well, you have to be to a degree. If you want to take that job and get paid eight, nine, ten million a year, whatever it is, you better be a puppet for the Glazers, my friend. Oh, you make no mistake. Make no mistake behind the scenes. There's a bloody hand right up Ten Hag's Jaxie. He is being puppeteered, my friends. And that's how it is. That's the only logical explanation for him still, I don't know, selecting Slappy Maguire or saying that that's a good decision or defending Defending the likes of Marcus Rashford and saying he's happy with him at the moment. Because Gashford's been Gashford. Why is he still getting selected? Why is Slabo still getting selected? Why is Bruno Fernandes still getting selected? Because let's face it, Bruno doesn't deserve to be selected. He's been gashed for a while now. Just because he's a big name player on big money. 
doesn't mean he should be starting in the games. So I think Ten Hag has made some fundamental errors here. Is he just a puppet? Liam H, thanks for your super chat here, Liam. He says, Dr. Ragnick told us we needed heart surgery. The Glazers kept us on McDonald's, Mars bars, and Benson and Edges. To be fair, that, that diet sounds pretty decent, that. <laughs> I feel you. No, you're absolutely right. Open heart surgery, that's it. They're just You just basically described my diet there, though, bud. What are you trying to say? Um, Liam H, thank you so much for your super chat, pal. You're absolutely right, Dr. Ragnick. He's said it we need to completely rebuild this team start again it needs a stick of dynamite and a rebuild so we needed 10 new players coming in this window we needed to have a big transfer window we did half of it we got rid of six gash merchants let them go people like jay lings and pogba and all these guys who've just been hangers on for a while but we didn't do the all important part which is replace them to a man and bring in lots of new good replacements to actually give us a good team that's what we needed to do we've done a half-assed job of it you know we have got Malasia martinez and of course ericsson but it's a half-assed job of it at the moment even if we get de jong it's a half-assed job of it thank you liam uh gung she comments 62.8k subscribers pig get in there get in there don gung i appreciate you man thank you so much we have got 62.8k subscribers now guys we went up a few hundred overnight probably all liverpool scum is getting in here like but um, do us a favor though if you're new to the channel say hello and also smash that like on this video if you're just joining us folks make sure you drop a like on it it's free it boosts us up on the algorithm helps us compete with the clickbait wank stains and corporation channels then make sure you hit the like on the video and also subscribe if you're new have your say you only need to be subscribed to to chat so get in there. Gangshi, how you doing there anyway, my son? Fat Chinese Gamer says, hope you're doing well. I'm not doing well, Fat Chinese Gamer, mate. I mean, I'm doing okay. But in regards to this football club and the state of affairs, I'm not doing well, bud. We got drubbed up to your seagulls the other week. We got shat on by the bees as well. Now stung. And they've given us that bloaty lips or whatever where we had a fucking allergic reaction. And we are absolutely reading, bud. We are reading. It's just a terrible state of affairs for this club. So, um... I mean, I'm personally okay, but maybe my stress levels are higher than they've been for a while, guys. Certainly, yesterday, it took me hours to wind down because it was just such a stressful game and a stressful result and an awful performance. And sorry there was no FIFA last night, guys. I just ended up just, I was just too stressed out and I just, just had to go to bed, guys, early. Took it out of me, that did, guys. It was an ordeal. So, um, you know, but... I'm all right, though. Thanks very much. Uh, oh, thank you very much there, Aaron, for putting the, the pin to the Twitter there. Nice one, mate. Yeah, so if any of you guys are on Twitter, you can retweet my tweet to this link, which will uh, help us spread the word out there even further. Also, if I'm not following you back and you give us a retweet and you follow me, I'll give you a follow back, my friends. And I'll give you a shout out later, everyone who uh, gives us a cheeky little retweet. Cake Cadet, thank you so much there for your super chat here, Cake. He comments and he says... 100k by Christmas. I don't know about that, but I'll be absolutely delirious if we could get that by next Christmas or even the Christmas after power. In all fairness, it's just it's about the community here, guys. It's insane. And uh, it doesn't matter about the, the actual number, does it? Rob MUFC, thanks for your um, your member highlighted comment there, you Don. Thank you very much, Rob, for being a member for two months. Let's get a two in there. He comments and says, hat, I get a two-month message. Hashtag Glazer twat out. Yes, Rob. That's what I want to see from your highlighted member comments, dudes. Use it for the good of the good of man and put that hashtag Glazers out in there. Great shout there. Thank you, Rob MUFC, for supporting the show. Susan Lively Sue says, these players on paper show us being better than they are playing. If they had lost yesterday, Day, but had put some fight in i think we would not be so angry what a great comment from susan lively sue that's right i mean um on paper they're much better than they actually are that as a team they're probably about where they should be in the league right now after two games we're 20 of folks we are probably the worst team in the league right now at this moment with where the team's at development wise fitness wise ten Hag just coming in the sort of players we've got in there i mean we are pitiful folks i mean look at this right look at this right so um on Sky, it says that Eric Ten Hag wanted to make Manchester United players run 13.8 kilometers, 8.5 miles during their exercises in their extra training session today because the Brentford players ran 13.8 kilometers more than them yesterday. Shame! Shame on our shitbag, gastastic, wankbag players, man! They can't fucking run around. They get paid hundreds of thousand pounds a week. They should be matching the intensity for against all of these uh, opposition teams that they're playing. Why are they such a bunch of lazy bastards? Why can't Luke Shaw stop going to Burger King? Why can't Slabo Maguire run faster than a bloody three-legged dog? I don't get it. But what I do know is that these are all not players that are capable of representing Manchester United to the standard we need. So, but Ten Hag is, um, is probably pissed off. I mean, if I was him, I would have... 
just absolutely gone mental at them after the game, folks. And I, I believe that's what's happened. You know, reports suggest that Ten Hag was not a happy bunny after the game yesterday. And, and obviously his quotes after the game, he said that they, they just basically just gave up and uh, obviously they didn't do enough and all the rest of it. But um, And also Simon Stone from the BBC reporting earlier on that Eric Ten Hag cancels the planned day off for the Manchester United players as an inquest into the humiliating defeat as uh, uh, Brentford continues, as that inquest continues. So, look, he's cancelling days off, rightfully so. These players don't deserve any free time. They need to work, 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 get themselves mentally right, start working super hard for each other and themselves out there on the pitch. And for Ten Hag, you know, Ten Hag's just come in and he's all the help he can get. He doesn't want to be up against it after a few games with his job in question. I mean, I've already seen that he's one of the favourites, maybe he's even the favourite to get sacked now, first in the Premier League. I mean, it's not his fault after two games. Clearly, the players are awful. Think about, OK, his, his tactics may well be to play out from the back and that's a rigid thing that he's got there. And he wants De Gea to be a bit of a sweeper keeper and play out from the back, right? And uh, maybe that's where he's gone wrong because perhaps De Gea isn't a proper sweeper keeper because if you look at yesterday, a couple of those goals obviously were down to De Gea and certainly that one where Ericsson shat it De Gea's played it out to him when he shouldn't really be as a man closing him down. And like, they're just not adept at that sort of close quarters in our own final third, passing out from the back. We can see we're not adept at that. And so maybe Ten Hag can have to make this team to, like, I don't know, have a bit, eat a bit of a shit sandwich for a while in terms of our play in the hopes that we progress and get better at these things. But he's, you know, he's he's not in control of the players making those fundamental errors, though. That might be the tactic. That might be the idea is to, you know, when we're going to try and play it out from the back. But the, the actual implementation of that being performed by these players like Harry Maguire asking for trouble in his own area many times yesterday with his awful dawdling on the ball and passing and distribution just being gash. And then uh, also, um, you know, like I say, De Gea making errors in that final third, in our own third, in our, our defensive position. It's just fundamental individual gash errors as well so these players are truly awful and Ten Hag is a good coach who needs time and we will only find out if he's a good coach if he gets that time and really the Glazers just need to spend 200 million between now and the end of the transfer window and try and assemble a team that's actually good you know why don't they just put some bloody money into the team their own bloody money why does it always have to be sucking money out of the football club and just spending a bare minimum here yes we might have spent a lot over the years we've also sold a lot of players and recouped a lot of money and they've hoarded us out left right and centre commercially and generated shit loads of cash so you know there's no excuses for them not to just have a big transfer window to try and make us compete to try and improve us because we're clearly miles away. They just don't want to spend the money. They've got to get the fuck out of this football club now, guys. I mean, look at this. Norrie Whitworth was the Glazers spending 270 million, buying MUFC for 790 million, loading the club with debt. Leverage takeover authorities should have blocked. IPO, share sales, dividends of recoup family, 440 million pounds. Major profits plus still own 69%. Transfer generated by the club. Fucking disgusting. Glazers, you know, this is this is what we're dealing with here, folks. Rob Dawson and getting on this, and not only have the Glazers drained United of their own money and left top level facilities to rot, they've ensured a culture of mediocrity. Challenges like Mourinho, Butt, Ragnick have been forced out. Conte overlooked because he might kick off. Top jobs going to internal appointments. Absolute farce. Absolute bunch of wanky bankers running the football club, just trying to make the money for the Glazers. It's just infuriating. This We've had enough of this now. They, they're rotten, guys. They're absolutely rotten from the top down. I mean, you know, Gary Neville has been coming out. He says that the Glazer family do not put money in and obviously he's questioning uh, the ownership everybody's everybody's questioning the ownership it's all mainly down to the ownership and the shit players we've got the common denominators are the gash owners and the gash players oh hang on i've got to catch up with this channel <laughs> sorry neil duffin you legend thanks for the super chat there neil duffin mate he says 17 years later and we're fighting relegation only way out is glazers out sick to death of these horrible leeches Great words, Neil Duffer. I couldn't agree more. Let's get a hashtag Glazers out and some green and gold emojis in there and some hashtags empty old Trafford in there as well. Neil Duffin, you're spot on, mate. That's it. Leeches. And things will never improve until they're gone. They probably will have us playing in the championships, these twats, if they stick around. They will milk us like a bunch of fucking, uh, what's the word, vultures circling from above until all the meat has been picked off the bones. And then, only then, will they probably move on to their next fucking carcass. They're a disgrace. Um, couldn't agree more, Neil Duffin. Rob, MUFC comments, we really should use the youngsters next match. How worse can it get? Garners, Iqbal, 
Garnacho Malassia, 10 to 1, says these kids go out with heart. Spot on, mate. I, I'm with you 100%, dude. Rashford dropped, Bruno dropped. Definitely like people like Fred and McTominay, nowhere near the start 11. Maguire dropped, Luke Shaw dropped. I'm with you 100%, bud. Give it to the youngsters. Give it to players who actually might fight for the badge, we might fight for a place in the team, we might show some hunger and desire and work hard for us. I couldn't agree more, Rob. Um, thank you very much, pal. Um, okay, so, you know, the Glazers are really strangling Manchester United big time and uh, you know you've even got people the, the situation you've got Ben Mee tweeting saying I don't normally post half of matches but then again I don't normally score in a 4-0 win against Manchester United for fuck's sake guys that's the that's the bloody position we're in we're a joke right now we've become a meme because of these owners and um, you know so Ten Hag is only a He's a tiny part of the problem with what he's done with his decisions and his selections, and they have been poor. He could give the opportunities to youngsters. He needs to learn from these fundamental errors he's made, the same errors that the previous managers have made, and drop all these overhyped players and start these youngsters. I, I couldn't agree more with what Rob just said, where he says we've got to start the youngsters and use them in the next game, because at least they will show hunger and desire. So uh, all of the players out, let's get a hashtag players out and a hashtag glazers out. I don't, the players the players here at Manchester United are a big problem. I think we could go through the starting eleven and even the squad and we could we could only find a few players that are really worthy of playing for Manchester United, both in terms of quality and in terms of character. We don't have the right players with the right bottle and leadership and you know just a determination about them. We've got a bunch of little fannies guys who just seem to give up and let their head drop. I mean, how do you go down and go down in in a, in a blaze of gash against Brentford 4 0 like that? When you're United and you actually outdo Brentford in terms of value on the pitch, eight to one. Man United's team was 400 million odd in value and Brentford's was 50. And a team assembled against us was an eighth of the value. And we, we, we played like it was the opposite way round. So you can't defend the players because a lot of these are fundamentally gash. Look at all those defensive areas. That defense is a shambles. Changed the whole lot, really. You know, Varane not being in that team was an absolute and disgrace in all fairness because the previous game against Brighton that back line performed awful as well so I don't understand why we're letting players play week to week who are just performing to an awful standard Bruno needs to be dropped Rashford needs to be dropped you know McTominay Fred all those guys need to be dropped um certainly I think you've got to look at Luke Shaw to be dropped to Malassia coming in for him be way more impressed with what I've seen from Malassia Slabby Maguire get the fuck out son Maybe do some sort of different thing where we play Martinez in midfield as well and do a, a different defense like Varane and Bailly or something. Just something different. Don't play the same old crap. And then the right back, Dallow, can't be playing. Even the next game, he was piss poor. So, uh, you know, we have got big problems here, guys. I mean, Davide De Gea has been speaking. Fair play to Davide De Gea. I, I think you'll, let's just make a note of this, by the way, folks. So in the game yesterday, obviously, we had a nightmare. Davide De Gea made some individual howlers himself he made one absolute howler which they they scored their first goal on and then he also had a hand in that second one of Ericsson and he had an awful game David De Gea is in my opinion one of our best most consistent players I'm not going to slag off David De Gea because he's had one bad game folks people I see people saying oh oh Henderson's had a really good game today Henderson in De Gea out are you fucking mental guys for one game David De Gea's made an error he's a goalkeeper goalkeeper's going to make errors let's see how he responds to this I bet you he responds like a fucking don because he's always been a good player for us his his character and his commitment and his consistencies for me are not in doubt his game yesterday was awful I can't say anything other than that it was absolutely awful but generally he's been one of the players to actually step up and, he, and, and yesterday was no different he's speaking to the cameras after the game where's our captain where's Slabo Maguire where's that big big prick prick where is this guy? He doesn't come out and face the music, does he? No, he gives it to old Davide. Davide should have the armband if he's going to be coming out representing the team when we lose 4-0 against Brentford. If he's got the character to face the cameras after he's had an individual mess up himself as well, then, you know, that's somebody that I think, oh, fair play, at least he's owning up to what he's done and saying it how it is. Not just hiding in the shadows, mate. He said, anyway, Davide De Gea says, sometimes in pre-season, it's pre-season, there's no pressure. You play for nothing. Then you play Premier League games. Everything's different. Teams put everything on the pitch. The teams are good. It's not easy. It's been a difficult few seasons. Probably it's still in our minds. When something goes wrong, people get panicky. It's difficult. We have to learn. We have a new manager, some new players. We need to be more positive. Keep learning and improve. I mean, look, you know, what can you really say after that sort of result? But um, me personally... 
De Gea asked for the interview, says Rashmana. Well, there you go. What a bloody, what a big bollock legend then. He's got big bollocks, this guy, and I like that. I want my I want my leader or some of the leaders in the team to have big bollocks. I don't want my leaders to have little uh, little little beans like uh, Slappy Maguire, you know, not prepared to face the music. I hate it. I can't stand it. I want to see I want to see a lot more character from our whole team. But anyway, so he's Eric Ten Hag's understood understood to have torn into his players after the performance. Um, the Glazers are the biggest problem, along with the players, in my opinion. Um, Ten Hag cancelled a planned day off for Man United players, as, as, as you know, after the humiliating result as well. Um, you know, we have got big problems at the football club with. <sighs> With, uh, with everything, really, guys. Our recruitment's bad. We can't seem to get De Jong over the line. We don't have the ambition. The Glazers don't want to spend the money. Maybe this start to the season will convince them to spend money. Because let's face it, they have to spend money to get this team anywhere near being competitive for Champions League football, I think. But will they back Ten Hag properly? Are they just going to let us rot? That's the problem here. Maybe they'll react. Maybe they'll panic. Maybe they'll try and do the bare minimum just to appease the fan base and spend money now. They weren't going to, though, I don't think. But just maybe now, because of what's happened at the start of the window, they'd do it but even if they do it's just a short term paper over the cracks try and appease the fan base um they don't care nothing's going to change guys and we'll never get back to being a consistently top club until those toss bags are out simple simple facts hashtag glazes out and uh, i'm going to get into the live chat now folks see what you guys are thinking about the game we're going to cover the latest transfer news and all the latest news today with Manchester United in, in a moment. But I just wanted to react to and just you know cover the fallout of the game yesterday because it was atrocious. So I'm going to get into the live chat for a few minutes now, see your reaction to the game, etc. Make sure you smash a like on this video. Help us get to 200 likes. We're not far away, actually. Drop a cheeky like on it if you're just getting in. That's all we ask. And hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel as well. Get yourself involved for the daily content and, uh, and have your say. Right, let's jump in the chat. Um, true Mancunas says it's like Maguire has to start similar to youth level when the father is the coach. <laughs> yeah. What is the logic behind him starting? All the previous managers did as well. Ragnick selected him. Oli sort of kept selecting him. And now it's Ten Hag's turn to keep selecting him. And he's given him the armband. I don't understand it. Suggest that he's a successful player. He's not a successful player. He's never won anything. He's just a guy who gets relegated and has a big breeze block head on his shoulders. And I've got no, uh, I've got nothing against him as a man, actually. I'm just saying, as a player for Man United, as a captain, he's certainly not good enough for us. He's the worst captain we've had in my lifetime by a country mile. So it's not even close. Uh, Ross says Maguire has to start because of the 80 million price tag. That is all. Good comment there, Ross. That's it. So what you're suggesting, the, the, the Glazers and Man United are protecting their asset. They've almost got some sort of weird obligation to play him just because they paid 80 million for him. And they don't want to be a laughing stock. They're still trying to hope that he revives his career or comes good. Or maybe they can inflate his price for a, a, a spell where he's had a good bit of form and they can sell him. I don't know what the reason is behind it. That, that makes a bit of sense. But it's a bad reason, isn't it? Just because you spent a lot of money on a player. If they turn out to be a duffer or dud, you shouldn't just blindly stick with them. You've got to do what's right for the team whether that player cost a pound or 100 million pounds in my opinion more for you for buying that player for 80 million quid but certainly cut your losses cut your losses and move on i mean let me ask the live chat folks let's just be honest now everybody in the live chat have a vote keep or sell harry Maguire. just keep or sell harry Maguire really quickly i want to know from the fan base that's in here 90 percent of you 95 percent of you will be united fans let us know what your uh your opinion is in regards to Maguire. Should we keep this guy or should we sell him? Palmarius says sell. James Gray sells says uh, uh, Pat Den. Sell says Chrissy J. How you doing there, Chrissy? Nass and Ryan Downton and Pyramid Scheme all say sell. Bin says compost. Sell says R Kings. Sell says Uncle Steve and David Willoughby and Supernatural Pasha and Scudro One. Sell, give him away. Sell, sell. Keep says Jose Bravo. Uh, Chris Park says keep slabby plays before broken Varan and proper gash by Ian Jones. You think so, do you, Chris Parker? I mean, I actually do disagree with that person. I think he's not the worst defender we've got, but he's far away from being the first or the second best. I think if you look at the defenders we've actually got, I think ultimately Eric Bailly is a better defender. It's just that he's completely injury prone. Varan's definitely a better defender. He's just completely injury prone. You can argue Lindelof's on par. You can argue. Uh, you know, Phil Jones, even on his day, this is, is maybe just as effective. I don't know. I mean, obviously not because he doesn't play and he hasn't played for years. But I'm just saying, Harry is actually pretty average. He's a good player, but he's not a great player. 
Jones is better even since Compost Murph. Well, he doesn't play, does he? But when we did see him coming for that one game where we lost that one game, he was actually pretty decent, you know. <laughs> um, also, Simon Stone from the BBC reporting that senior figures at Man United understand the scale of the anger of the fans and accept there's no quick fix to the present situation. And that is it. It's just a gash situation. Um, hey, thank you, Kate Cadet, for getting in here with your super chat, man. He oh, says, Glazers, Murtaugh, Arnold, Fletcher, fuck off. Thank you for your super chat there, bud. Uh, yeah, respect, man. I agree with that, man. Let's get a green and gold emoji in there for Kate Cadet. He's spot on. That's it. I mean, we just want change. We want a new regime. And that comes from the top down. Uh, if we could get new owners, I would hope that more or less everybody involved with all this, these technical bullshit roles we've got in the football club behind the scenes, people like, you know, Murtar, people like Darren Fletcher, even, um, you know, of course, uh, Arnold and all these guys. They're just more of the same old sort of guff, if you ask me. I mean, OK, Darren Fletcher's a bit different, but a lot of these, a lot of these guys clearly are not doing their jobs very well, I don't think. So I would just basically just get rid of a lot of them start again you know we, we need a whole new fundamental change at man united but the biggest thing is definitely owners that's the biggest thing thank you pat denny for subscribing to the live chat yep um i mean to the channel in the live chat thank you very much but yes yeah, certainly the biggest thing is the owners if we could get rid of them and they were out of this football club then that's where that's going to stem most of the problem sell says rahul Thank you very much, Kate Cadet, by the way, for that one, bud. Appreciate you um, and everybody who's in here having your say. What a bunch of legends. 100% Pigo, all needs burning down. Thank you, Rush Mono. He says subscribe to the channel. Yes, indeed. If you guys are new, drop a little sub up. We're almost at 63,000 subscribers now, guys. I can't quite believe it. We went up a lot over the last 24 hours due to Man United being so shit, basically. So, you know, and obviously my videos um, responding to that. So, um, but, you know... Thank you for being here, guys. We're on our way to 63. If you're new to this channel today on this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and get yourself involved. Susan says, if a player's not doing his job, he should be benched. Spot on. That's it. Why are we sticking with underperformers? Smash a like, says Rob. Thank you, bud. Zane Miassi, what's going on, Zane Miassi? How you doing, boss? He says, expressions and flying pig meltdown. What's the score in that one? It's nil-nil in the Chelsea Spurs game right now. So Nottingham Forest did manage to beat West Ham 1-0. What a great result for them, by the way. Yeah. Lingard's posse started, obviously. Probably, uh, that's a de decent Dean Henderson as well on loan, doing bits. Zane Miassi, thank you very much for getting in here with your super chat, bud. I hope you're well today. I'm a little bit more chilled out today, bud. I'm still pissed off, though. I'm still angry. I feel very, very robbed by the Glazers. I feel like this is another wasted season. We we can't, this is, this is time in our lives so we're not getting back, guys. We don't ask that Man United win everything every year. That's unreasonable. The Fergie days we were spoiled, it's unreasonable. All we ask is that we're striving to try and compete for everything every single season sometimes it's not going to go your way and we want to have a team that represents the club well represents the fan base well by being a full-blooded entertaining attacking team where you know we we put up a good fight and put up a good show week to week that's all we're asking for it's not it's not the most thing to ask for in the world when you're a massive huge tremendous club like manchester united but with them as our owners that's it you're seeing the mediocre standards just slip slip in and all of our history and traditions are being undone because of this regime so that's it folks i mean we can't do anything until these guys are gone cancerous parasitical toss bags lead this football club and until they're out we are pretty much in for this for a while we're in for this for a while hey there could i mapini he says hi pig do you think the deal for de Jong will be done Oh, goodness me, my friend. I, I I mean, I do think so, because the situation there is they're treating him like awful, an awful mess. And uh, they're not playing him. They're not playing him. And I mean, like, Xavi's come out. He said that he sort of resigned to the fact that he may lose him. This is just last night, late last night from Fab. Xavi quotes saying, no, Frankie de Jong is not a substitute. I don't know what will happen with the market. I can guarantee that if he stays, he will be important for us. So, you know. It depends really on if De Jong's super committed to Barcelona, even though they treated him like shite. More for him, but obviously we won't get him. But if they continue to do what they're doing, uh, take a long time to settle up what they owe him. I mean, there's an understanding that they could be just getting Manchester United to try and pay these deferred wages that they owe him, essentially. They're making us sweat to the point where we want to step in and make it happen for them, you know, which is wrong. It's a disgrace. We are being bent over here by Barcelona and Frankie de Jong's being used as a pawn in this, in this whole thing. They've got a lot of new players in which they've registered most of them and, um, but they still need to balance the books and Frankie de Jong is not really a player they want to keep because of the huge amount of money he's on. They, they may well have to keep him if he just decides to outright stay. 
and get what he's owed if they don't want to settle up first. But I just think, what, why, agree a, why agree a deal with Manchester United then if you're not prepared to do the deal? It just doesn't add up at all. So I do think we're going to get him, um, but God knows when. And who, who knows if we do? It may, it may well not happen. I mean, let's just ask the live chat, guys. Does Frankie de Jong stay or go? <laughs> what do you really think, guys? Does he stay or go? Kate Cadet, thank you for the super chat, my son. He says, what if we set up a GoFundMe to buy Man United, says the Kate Cadet. I mean, it's a fantastic idea, pal. I mean, it is a fantastic idea. We went over this the other day, didn't we? We went through the, the figures. There's a, supposedly a few hundred million United fans around the world. Let's just say that we could get, I don't know, a hundred million of them to, to, to donate a pound, right? So that's 300 million pounds right there. That's nowhere near enough. We need about four or five billion to get these days of shit houses out. However, that's just with everyone donating a pound. If some people donated 10 and some people donated 50 and some people donated 100, then you probably would be able to get enough from the United fan base to to, 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 to bleed these Glazer shithouses out of our football club, to give them their blood money, to give them their 30 pieces of silver, to take to the fucking devil with them, my son. That's what you've probably got enough to do. So it's actually a fucking great idea, mate. It's actually a good idea, but who knows how that would happen. You have to have, like, a holdings company set up in order to, you know, represent the the, the fans and also then buy the club in name of the fans. And it'd just be a big league. Well, you, you, you need somebody with millions of pounds, probably, just to even get that thing organized. So it's a nightmare, mate. Um, <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, it would be nice. Buy it with debt money, says Wondrous Words. Well, let's do this as Mark Nurse. James T says it won't work. No, it would it would be difficult. It'd be very difficult. It would be difficult. But you could you could do it. You could do it. I mean, it's just a consortium with uh, very many people. Essentially, you're what you're doing is you're giving the fans ownership and the fans a voice and the fans a voting power and the fans, you know, um, I don't really know. It's, <laughs> it's it's so complicated that. But that's the dream, isn't it? If somehow the fans could own the football club, that would be the absolute dream. Um, and then we just put everything that the football club generates back into the football club. There's not any fat cat billionaire twat um, sat in some ivory tower in a different country who's getting dividends paid out to him or, you know, OK, of course, there will be dividends paid out, I suppose, in the future, because that's what dividends are. They're, they're, they're basically, you know, payments, rewards on holding stock in the company. So it's not like dividends are necessarily an alien thing. It's just that you only take should only take dividends out if you're an owner of a football club, in my opinion, in any way, if your club's actually doing well. <laughs> you know, if you're doing well, and I'm not just talking about from a finance point of view, I'm talking about on the pitch. If your club's doing well, okay, maybe everybody who's got shares and is bought to stocks in your club to help your football club deserves a little payout. You know, I get that. But not when you're doing shite like the Glazers have been doing and still taking money out of this football club. Uh, you've got a tenor, says Steve Buckley. That's what I'm saying. I mean, who knows? I, 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 me personally, I wouldn't want to be in charge or responsible for that sort of thing because it just sounds like it's a, just a, an absolute headache. <laughs> it really does sound like an absolute headache. I would love to uh, be a part of it, though, and spread the word. But, man, I don't have the money, the wherewithal, the legal means, etc., to be able to set up something like that. Like I say, you'd need a holdings company and all this crazy shit, and it would just be mad. Anyway, <laughs> who would I want to buy at the moment of the, of the, of the club, says Steve Buckley? Well, De Jong would be a dream to get in. I think Tenar clearly wants him. He would be great. I think we need a new right back. So any good right back such as Denzel Dumfries would be brilliant. I'd like Anthony at the club. Gakpo we'd take. Um, you know, uh, Nkunku would be a fantastic investment, I think. Versatile, can score you goals. Um, you know, there's a bunch right there. It's not that hard, is it? There's lots of players out there still that we could go and get. You've just got to be prepared to spend and by the players. It would turn into a bigger mess than what it is now, says James T. Screw you, James T, lad. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't want to get involved with it because it's just a, it's a legal nightmare. But no, no, no. In all, in all honesty, if you had a fan-appointed, uh, essentially a fan-appointed jury or board, you know, but a fan board, which represents the fans and is made up of a lot of people, a lot of different notable, I don't know, yeah, fans, ex-players, etc. Own, you know, I don't know. All I'm saying is it'd be better than this current regime of shite. There are certain football clubs out there which are largely fan-owned, um, and therefore they have a say in what happens in the club. I mean, I think Swansea City, a quarter of that at least, is owned by the fans, essentially the Swansea City supporters group or whoever it is. I don't really know, but you know, so it can be, it can be done. It can be done. Um, ideally, in an ideal situation, what would happen is, yes, yeah, some super rich millionaire, sugar daddy type would come and buy the club. They'd 
write off all our debts. They'd buy the Glazers out. And they'd also give some of the club back to the fans. There would be some sort of a, a fan consortium where they gave us, you know, a percentage of the club in order to be able to have a proper solid vote to be able to veto any bullshit decisions. Yeah, such as joining the Super League and stuff like that. Um, okay, hang on a sec. Let me just have a look at this. We've got a little bit more info coming out. So apparently Man United, this is from Sky, Man United want to see a change in Cristiano Ronaldo's attitude or they may consider terminating his contract. What a load of bollocks. We need Cristiano Ronaldo more than anybody, don't we? Sky are really, really uh, scraping the barrel on that one. I mean, okay, look, he's obviously not happy. Cristiano Ronaldo was super frustrated on the pitch. You know, think about his uh, reaction yesterday. He's so angry. Look, what I love about Cristiano Ronaldo, there's a video here going round of Ronaldo looking so frustrated and pissed off. And good. That's what you're supposed to be like when you're fucking getting drubbed up 4-0 by Brentford. It's an embarrassment. It's a frustration. It's pathetic. You know, you're not supposed to just smile and walk down the tunnel. So, you know, Sky Sports talking bollocks there in all fairness. But look, Ronaldo, obviously, we know that he, he isn't happy here. Can you really blame Ronaldo? The longer this goes on and the season started now when we're playing awful and the team's terrible and we can see we haven't invested in the team. We can see we haven't bought in new quality players that are better than the shite that we had before. Well, some of them, we bought some in, but we haven't bought enough in. Um, and so Cristiano Ronaldo can see that as well. How frustrating must it be? He's a goat, man. He's an absolute goat. He should be playing in a top team, getting the service galore all day long, scoring goals, taking chances, challenging for trophies and, and winning accolades. That's what Cristiano Ronaldo is all about. Now, so I completely understand where he's coming from. If he still wants to leave this football club, I honestly do. But I really want him to stay because I know he's so good. But um, crikey, it's, look, us losing yesterday, Forna was zero down to Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, maybe in the build-up to the first goal, he's got easily done. And that's led to De Gea shitting the bed. But, you know, he's still not expecting that calamity to happen. Um, but Ronaldo, other than that, he's not a problem at Manchester United. It's a lot of the other players are the problem. Even though he wants away, I'd still rather him playing than a lot of these shitbags. Because at least you know what you're going to get with Ronaldo. He's somebody that's going to try. He's somebody that's committed. He's somebody that wants the best. Ronaldo doesn't deserve this as Lucky Singh. Mm. Jonathan says, but apparently Ronaldo is the problem. Yeah, I can't understand that level of thinking, man. Love an empty stadium for the Liverpool match, but we have too many sheep fans, says John O'Connor. Yep, good point. I mean, that's it. I mean, it, it's got to be empty, dude. It's not going to be good if it's half empty. That's what's the point of that. I think it does need to be empty. I agree, man. Um, okay, so also we've got a bit more info coming in here. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough one. Coaches want, what's this about Ronaldo now? So Man United coaching staff and players become increasingly frustrated with Cristiano Ronaldo's behaviour. That's what is being reported by the Times. I mean, interesting. I mean, yeah, so that's what we're just saying. Like, Cristiano Ronaldo is obviously not happy. If I was him, I wouldn't be happy either. But clearly he wants away from this club. It's a weird situation. It is what it is. Um, right, let me just get into the news then, folks. So, I'm, you know, we've discussed the game yesterday. It's a nightmare. But, okay, so Xavi, they're insinuating that, you know, De Jong still may move. Hopefully De Jong moves. Barca need to settle it up. We're not going to dwell too much on De Jong because it's just the same old shit. It's frustrating. We're waiting for more movement. We're waiting for Barca to either settle up and pay what they owe this guy or uh, or for something else to happen. But right now, it's just the same old shit. Um, in regards to Rabio, so uh, this is from Fab from seven hours ago. Manchester United want to push for Adrian Rabio as a new round of talks will take place soon with his mother and agent Veronique. All parties involved are now really confident to get the deal done. Juventus are waiting as 17 slash 80 million deal has already been agreed. So Juventus have agreed it's on now. Manchester United to still agree these terms with Rabio, aka Slabio. This is going to be crap, guys. He's a bang average player, really. And he's coming in here all the wrong reasons. A cast off from Juve. No, thank you very much. But Manchester Evening News reporting that United reached total agreement on Rabio personal terms. Personally, think that's bullshit, you know, uh, but there you go. Um, this is what Fab said seven hours ago, but then a few hours after that, maybe it's the case, maybe they have reached agreement now. But there you go. They said that there's a total agreement on terms. Uh, Fab, we're waiting for more information to come out here still, though. Uh, we're just checking constantly to see if anything's coming in. Um, yep, and that is... Still the case. So, yeah, still the case. I don't think anybody, any tier one journos here have confirmed that there's a bit personal terms agreed. But a lot of different outlets are reporting it. Um, OK, also, we've got a, a report here from Hearst class, Paul Hearst, who comments and says that Cristiano Ronaldo's demeanour is said to be worsening the atmosphere at Carrington, with one source describing him as a walk in bad mood. Ah, oh, come on now. If I was Cristiano, I'd be a walk in bad mood. If you're not in a walk in bad mood at United, do you even care? Fuck me. Could you imagine Roy Keane? 
in training during this this sort of situation if this was happening during his time do you think he'd be going in all sunshine and rainbows fucking singing oh zippity doo da zippity yay my oh my what a wonderful day no it's not a fucking wonderful day you just got drummed up for against fucking Brentford yesterday son you should be walking in with a bad mood you should be pissed off you should be disgusted that's what I want I don't want people don't care so, look, Ronaldo, unless he's super nonchalant, like, oh, you know, like, not trying, like, lazy, like, you know, sending out the bad, starts eating fucking hamburgers in front of Luke Shaw and stuff, stops eating salmon and drinking water and gets the Coca-Colas out and stuff and starts fucking fanning around. Unless he's doing that, then he's fine by me. If he's just pissed off, then that's fine by me because everybody should be pissed off with this football club right now and how things are going. Um... I was very moist yesterday. I really was, yeah. I was very moist. Um, so... You know, anyway, we're pushing for Rabio, so the personal terms probably be agreed very soon if they're not already. MEN saying they are, but we're waiting to see if there's any more reports that come out to say that it's 100% done there yet before we say. Um, and we are working on De Jong still. So, you know, guys, I'd love to say there's more info on that. I mean, the previous stuff we have got that we're still interested in Cody Gakpo. But um, and I think we'd probably be more interested in Cody Gakpo now if uh, you look at the performances from some of our players recently, people like Marcus Gashford. We'd probably be more interested in Cody Gakpo now. But I want to see a, a reaction now from the Glazer shit houses. I want to see what they're capable of in terms of like actually investing. But really, I don't even care about their investment anymore. I want them gone. I'd, I'd be on. I'd, I'd be honest. If 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 we if we actually had a shit season this season and got relegated and they decided to sell the football club, I'd take that all day long to uh instead of the, the 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 current situation instead of the future of them staying if it meant one or two bad seasons for us but then they're gone we take that because they are a cancerous mess at this football club who stopped the club progressing um so crikey i mean i'm not i don't think we're in a relegation battle this season stranger things have happened though we're a huge club but look we might be the worst team we might have the worst owners and we might have a set of players who don't care that's the reality so if you add all that together, we might have technical qualities and Ronaldo and you know, lots of good players. But crikey, lots of good teams have underperformed. I don't think we're going to be in a relegation battle, but man, we could finish 10th this season. We could finish 12th this season. You know, this could be a mess of a season. This could be like that last season when Jose was there at Chelsea or not, where he was absolutely, it all went, to, all went wrong. Oh, Zami Yassi has got a super chat in here. Zami Yassi, thank you for the super chat. He says, pig. I think Ten Hag will get sacked. We will finish third. Hazel's second top scorer. You hire Poch. And we will have the biggest pig meltdown. <clears throat> Zami Yassi has inflated his space hopper bollocks to come into the live chat today. Seeing as Arsenal won a couple of games on the bounce. Which is very un-Arsenal. So fair enough saying strange things happen. You're actually looking pretty good at the moment. Jesus getting a couple of goals, a couple of assists. You know, I don't really have much to say, mate. I've kind of got to eat a bit of humble pie, lad. Because what can I say? United are shit at the moment. But in regards to Ten Hag getting sacked, well, I mean, when's he going to get sacked? Because that's the thing. Like, is it going to be early? If Imagine if he loses his first five games. We've got Liverpool coming up, Southampton away, I think, and Leicester at home. Those are tough old games. Like, especially for a team that's underperforming and just gash. We need to get some results from somewhere. And if we don't, he's going to be up against it. Look, in all fairness, it's a rebuild. We can't just sack him right early doors. He's going to have to have, I think he needs at least until the end of the season. So I would have said previously longer, but look, we, we will probably know by the end of the season whether or not he's capable of getting this team back on track. Of course we will know that, but he still needs a long time. It's not like it's easy to fix this mess overnight when we've got the players we've got. Fair enough if he'd been given a £250 million war chest to strengthen with transfers this summer and we're playing like this. That's a different scenario, but we haven't. We had six players go in the summer. We didn't replace them and we're still scratching around for transfers. So he has still actually got a bad squad. So I, I feel for the guy. I feel for the guy. He may well get sacked. What do you think? Let's ask the live chat. Let's just ask the live chat real quick, guys. Does Eric Ten Hag get sacked before the end of the season? Yes or no? Does he get sacked before the end of the season? Maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get a poll up there. I mean, it's a it's a bit negative. Ten Hag, but I don't. But you know, I just want to see what people are saying. Ten Hag sacked before end of season. I, I think they'll personally stick with him through thick and thin until the end of the season, because we've only just appointed him. They can't keep chopping and changing managers, can they? Uh, yeah. Mm. 
They can't keep changing managers, guys, so willy-nilly. So, uh, but we'll ask the live chat. So, yes, there's William Blake. Yes, there's NC3. No, says Walking Stone. I hope no, says Keshav. I've just got a poll up in the live chat then, folks. Thanks for having a vote in the chat. But get a little click on the poll there. See what your thoughts and opinions are. Let us know. And also, if you're just getting in the stream, drop a thumbs up on this video. Help us get to 250 likes. We're nearly there. And smash that subscribe button if you're new. If it's your first time here, we're on here every single day for the United News. So come and join us. Get yourself involved. Click the bell icon as well if you're new. You know what, folks? We're only five subscribers away from 62,900. That's right. Five. So if there's five of you legends out here who are new, please do consider smashing that red subscribe button there and, and clicking the bell also. Thank you, dudes. Rico S, thanks for the super chat, Rico. He says, look, Anthony isn't coming to United, but everyone who loves football needs to watch the highlights of the game he played today. Unreal. Thank you, Rico S. I'll check that out, but I'll check that out, pal. And uh, what a depressing state when we can't even get Anthony at the club. You know what I mean? Because of United's lack of ambition. Yeah, this guy is a quality player and he might be a little bit overpriced at Ajax. They might be asking a little bit too much. But if United had ambition, he's exactly the sort of player we would be going to get for Ten Hag. And um, he's young, he's Brazilian, he's <laughs> going to have a good future in the game more than likely. Right now he looks like a, a, a good player a baller and he's uh, young so there's not really that much of a gamble it's just that yes it's a lot of money Liverpool spent 100 million on Darwin Nunes you can go and invest in a player you think you've got a lot of faith in and is a really good talent is going to help the team United's owners don't have ambition you know 80 million euros prices is out the market but should it because that's like 67 million pounds it's 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 a lot of money but if you're ambitious and you want to improve your team don't you go and do that don't you go and do that deal we're fucking bollocks aren't we the Glazers are absolutely killing this club we should be capable of going to sign big players, like you know, big money players when we need them. We need to invest. He will walk before he sacks his compost smurf. Ten Hag's the new De Boer, says NC3. We're desperate for a left-footed right winger, says Yishil. Um Pep first season at Man City, he removes 10 players. Ten Hag should do the same. Spot on MFO. Ten Hag can make a difference if the players will listen and learn to adapt. Spot on Susan. And I hope he, I hope he actually just gets rid of a bunch of them as well who are underperforming. Ross Briggs, I think it's part to do with cancelling the Ragnick consultancy as well. Had to go in a different direction sort of problem is if we knew what was wrong. Yeah, fair enough, Ross. That's it. Well, they 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 did themselves dirty by cancelling the Ragnick consultancy because he, he is a football man who was telling them to make football decisions. And unfortunately, they didn't want to make those football decisions because the financial ramifications were too poor for the Glazers. Stuart Ullis says, this pig, why did Ten Hag play Ericsson as a false nine one week then as a defensive midfielder of the next? Clueless. I don't know why he played him as a false nine in all fairness, but he did drop him deeper in that same game and he played well, just sat in front of the back nine for the last for the second half of that first game when he started to set it forward. So maybe he thought he could do the job for him next game. But I must admit, yeah, uh, uh, what's the plan? You know, what's the plan with Ericsson? I thought he was going to be coming in to sort of challenge Bruno Fernandes for his space and he should probably start ahead of Bruno Fernandes in all fairness in a CAM role because Bruno's been shite and deserves to be dropped. Josh Barnes, thanks for your subscription. Thank you for subscribing. And Kevin Donovan and Puya Mantisar Kusari. That's three people. We just need two more subscribers, guys. Um, oh, Gangshi, maybe we've done it. Gangshi says we've done it. Oh, get in there, my son. Baby, we did it. Break out the red panties. It's red panty night. The live chat's got our 62.9k subscribers, baby. Oh, that is absolutely unbelievable. Thank you, guys. Come on. Let's go. We're only 100 away from 63k now. That's mental, isn't it? We only just hit 62k the other day. So that is pretty cool, folks. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And thanks for subscribing. All the new subscribers, all the old subscribers and legends of this channel. Piggy loves you. Um, okay. So... Devils are red says, train them for as long as you like. They haven't got the ability or talent. Well said. Some of them maybe will be able to be brought along in a Tenag system and develop and get better and find their form. Others, I think we've proven that they're gashed now at this football club and probably should be sold. People certainly like Slavy Maguire, Scott McTominay. I mean, Rashford's getting there. Rashford's getting there. Maybe people can be saved. Bruno Fernandes, we know, is capable of a lot better. Maybe even Martial could do well under Ten Hag. But I'm just thinking a lot of these players, we know they're not good enough. Luke Shaw's pretty much hit the, hit the ceiling as well. I mean, I've been holding out hope for Luke Shaw, but is he ever really going to get back to that one good season's form or standard that he got? He put out? No, I don't think he's a world-class left-back, nor will he ever be. Thank you very much, Brian Foskett. Now. Thank you, Rajat Palacia. Thank you, everyone, for getting in there as well. Chris Parker says, fix 63K, come and easy pick. You're the greatest host on YouTube. Thank you, Chris Parker, you bloody legend, man. Um, Jack says, Pig Ten Hag will turn this shite around and Man United will win Paul next game. Oh, well, just imagine if we beat Liverpool. That is the sort of game that can get you back on track. Absolutely. 
Um, hey, FCG, Fat Chinese Gamer says, how about Fred? I mean, Fred as well, I wouldn't play him for the next game. I still think Fred's a decent sort of a squad player. I rate him, you know, much higher than Scott McTominay in all fairness, because at least he does work very hard and is effective a lot of the time. You know, a lot of the time. Sometimes he stinks the bed out. But he is okay as a squad player. I'm not saying he should start. He's not a starter. But you need depth in your squad to be able to come in for certain games and come on last 20 minutes, see games out. Fred's okay. Fred's okay in my book. He works hard. He's got the right mentality, right attitude. I like Fred. I just don't like his technical abilities with the passing out of the football. But he's all right. He's a squad player at best. But he's okay. I would sell Scott McTominay in a heartbeat, though. Thank you, Drunk Vigo. Um, who do you think, who do you, what's that? Why do you want to keep sacking managers as Lucky Singh? I don't think anybody wants to keep sacking managers. I certainly don't. I, 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 you know, I want us to be successful and us to have a proper regime for a long time. Like start a new dynasty now. That's what we need. You know, you look at what happened previously with Fergie. You know, he was, he, he, he was a stalwart of the football club for nearly three decades, folks. So you've got to say, um, this man is, uh, somebody to try and emulate we want somebody here long term that's who we want we just want our next era of stability we don't want to chop and change managers every season or two we want to have a ne the next the next player the next manager who's going to stay here for a long time and be successful so it's just finding them though that's the thing i mean it might be ten hagi might be the guy it's only early for him we don't know yet i mean just to go back to alex ferguson we know that uh, alex ferguson's first few seasons we're really not very good at all, folks. <laughs> not very good at all. He very much struggled. If it wasn't the FA Cup final and all that sort of stuff, he could have been sacked off. And that was years and lots of money spent. So we do have to understand that this is a total rebuild. But the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is, is that <sighs> the owners are the biggest problem, guys. And it's while they're still here, what's the point of rebuilding in a certain direction? Because they're always going to shackle us. Oh, yes, we are in real trouble, Gucci lover. I agree. Mindset on Liverpool tomorrow, says CV. Tenag will find these players out. I trust him. Shame out players. Yeah, well, okay, Chris Park. I hope you're right, but he needs to drop the players then, doesn't he? He's still the one who selects the team, so he's got to be bold and brave and make decisions like stripping Slabby of the captaincy, like dropping the, the underperforming big-name players like Bruno and Rashford and these sorts of guys, Luke Shaw, who may be our senior players who have been there a long time. Big decisions need to be made because they're not doing the business. And unless we actually say, no, we're not accepting this mediocre level, we're going to play a youth player who wants it, then nothing will change. If these players are allowed to perform to the same mediocre standard and still play, still getting the team regardless, collecting their six figures a week, then they'll just continue to just do the bare minimum and it won't improve. We need to set high standards at the club and that's what Ten Hag needs to do. So look, yeah, big time. If Ten Hag doesn't do something like drop about five of the same, of the first team that he selected the last game, then I think he's made a big mistake for the Liverpool game. I think he should have dropped about five or six from the Brighton game to the Brentford game and he only made one change, which was McTominay out. That's the only change he made. Should have been wholesale changes, really. So he's got to have the braveness and the bollocks about him to make wholesale changes. Do you, let's ask the chat, guys. Do you think Ten Hag makes a lot of changes for the next game against Liverpool? Yes or no? Will he make a lot of changes? Will he be bold? And I don't mean bold. I mean, will he be bold to, to make the changes? Or yes or no? Or will he just make one or two and it'll be the same old shit with Slabby Maguire captain on the side? What do you think? <clears throat> Not much, says Debella. Formation, says Chris Barker. Yes, he has to, says Keshav. Yes, says Dublin Games. Well, I thought he had to from the Brighton game, but he didn't. Um, he will not be bold, but bald, says Sukrash Uh Yes, I have to for benefit of the team, says Lucky Singh. No, but he should. No, balls, says Maddows. Yes, says Dizzy. Same old shit, says uh, Devils are red. Same old. 100%, uh, 80% sure he will be bald, says Dishul. Hope so, says Jonathan Gallagher. No, same rubbish next week, says Woody. Woody. My team would be De Gea, Dallo, uh, Varane, Martinez, Malasia, Donny, Garner, Eriksson, Sancho, Ronaldo, Garnacho. See, I like that better, man. Get a couple of those youngs in there. That's that's my team. That's more or less my team too. Maybe I would have a different right back, to be honest, Alex Ferguson. But that's more or less my sort of favourite team too. Golden Merlin says yes. Yes, if he's got the ball, says David Hodgey. Uh, he will, says Rajat. Yes, says Michael. Bald and semi-bald. Should be a few changes at least, says Gangshi. Drop them. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Is he going to be the same old tried and tested Glazer puppet or will he be bold and make those changes and actually drop those prima donnas? We'll find out. He has to for the Liverpool game. I mean, I know what some people say. Oh, it's the Liverpool game. Do you really want to have like youth players playing? In the yes, I do. 
I do want youth players playing in the Liverpool game over these bunch of shit houses who are proven guff. I don't care if they're more experienced. I don't care if on paper, you know, they've got experience of playing against these top teams more so. They're not doing it right now. Um, anyway, Garnacho, 100%. Rashford out, Garnacho in, 100%. KK, 100%. Aaron Wambasaka and Dallow fighting it out for a right bike sp spot. Fuck my life. If that's it, Compost Murph. Slim pickings at United. At least Wambasaka can defend. Spot on Ross Briggs. I rate him as a defender. I really do. Yeah, that's it. Cash our channel since as if we don't drop five or six players, we'll be hitting double figures next week. Eric Tenag must surely understand this. Hope so, but I would have thought that he'd have got the memo based on that Brighton game that Slabo Maguire was shite and that Scott McTominay and Fred were guff. In the end, he's ended up calling Scott McTominay off the bench in that Brentford game to try and make something happen. Where's the logic? Um, rubbish De Gea says MFO. He was awful, but look, I'm not going to slag De Gea off too much. It was a bad day at the office for De Gea, but it's a rare bad day indeed. He doesn't have bad days very often. Paul Kern, Yang Lim, thank you so much there for hitting the subscribe button, mate. Appreciate you subscribing. Guys, we're on 62.905 now, guys. We're on, we're absolutely cruising our way to 63K. Thank you all you legends for tuning in and subscribing to the show. Uh, hit the subscribe if you're new. Smash the like if you're new to the show. And hit the bell icon too. Um, will Ronaldo's situation at United change, says Johnny. Will he go now? I really hope he stays. It's probably more likely to, isn't it? The longer this goes on, Ronaldo must be feeling more and more and more frustrated, like he's completely wasting his time here now. So the more this goes on, the less likely it is, I suppose, he stays. But look, if no club comes in for him, what can you do? So there were some reports coming out from Italy that he was offered to a couple of clubs like Inter Milan and they've said no and uh, and this sort of thing. So apparently uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has been offered to Inter and Milan and they rejected. So, you know, it's like there's various offers being made perhaps behind the scenes that we don't necessarily know about. But it doesn't seem like anybody's queuing up desperately to try and sign Cristiano Ronaldo from us at the moment. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's... It's pretty crazy. So we got a report here from um, from uh, Hurst again here that says, during today's training session, Eric Ten Hag told Man United players that they had not met the high standards that he and the club demand. Spot on. Spot on. That's the least to be said about the situation. Yeah. Also, Fabrizio Romano via court offside, just a little bit more on a couple of players. He said, United will then after the Rabio deal, decide on the situation of a new striker. It is also necessary to understand how the winger issue will evolve, with Cody Gakpo discussed internally. So we still maybe have an interest in Gakpo. If Ronaldo does go for whatever reason, if an offer comes in from Sport in Lisbon and he's it's too good to turn down for him and he wants to go back home and all that sort of stuff, and we accept it because it's a decent offer, then you know we're going to have to have a look at the striker situation. We probably should sign a striker anyway because Ronaldo's going next season and we need more goals from somewhere. Um, but lots of different, um, you know, lots of different options for us, but we don't seem to want to go for any of them. <clears throat> right. Also on MEN, there's a few different topics here real quick before we get into the Q&A. Um, Ten Hag cancels day off for the players. Inter and Milan both turned down Ronaldo move. And um, also United hoping still to complete a couple of different signings. Uh, also, we're still linked to players like Mauro Icardi. I don't know if you've seen that link, but we're linked to him. We're also linked to Cody Gakpo. Um, you know, uh, we're also apparently weighing up a move for Moises Caicedo, um, who's a player that we could have got previously. I mean, how bad is our recruitment when we just could have got that guy a while ago and we didn't, and now we're linked with him and he's playing for a different team in the Prem. We could have got him for chump change before. Also, different reports suggesting that United are joining the race for Marcelo Brozovic as well, which is an interesting link. Um, but these are just all speculative stuff on MEN. Um, so we get off that now because it's a bit guff to be honest. But apparently Moises Caicedo and a few players there, you know, Icardi and lots of different players we're looking at. Fabrizio Romano said that winger priority target is Anthony, but the deal's complicated because of the amount of money involved. So it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to do a deal there. But if we had a bit of bollocks about and some, and some ambition, we would. I think it'd be quite easy to do a deal for Anthony, really. All Ajax want is money. They're a, they're a club that creates and sells players for money. So give them a shitload of money and we'll get our player. It's fucking easy, really. It's bloody easy. And okay, you don't want to just spend frivolously. Well, there's a deal to be done. They want 80 million euros. They're not going to get that. Let's go with a cheeky little 70 million plus a loan player. Is 70 million euros and we'll give you Ahmad Diallo on loan for a season and just to sweeten the deal a little bit, my friend. And if you don't want a loan player, we'll actually give you an actual player. You can go and take, I don't know, Victor Lindelof or some shite and we'll give you 60 mil. Like, it's fucking easy. Easy. What is the matter with these people? Uh, they don't have the ambition. They don't want to spend. And it's as simple as that. Also, Bernardo Silva uh, posted uh, a little piece, a little tweet on um, maybe on his uh, Twitter after the game against Bournemouth and stuff. And, uh, 
yeah, he basically, it maybe it looks like he's going. So that's an interesting link. If he does end up going to Barca or something, then surely that increases the likelihood yet again that De Jong's coming to Manchester United. I don't know, folks. I'm sick of talking about that. Oh, right. Okay. It's half time in the Chelsea Spurs game and it's 1 0. Kula Bali scored. Kukurella got the assist. You what? A couple of players United could have got and have been linked with previously. Kukurella left back. And Koulibaly, all linked with United for years. Koulibaly on the score sheet for Chelsea against Spurs. Shit the bed, man. Anyway, um, so there you go. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, that's, you know, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got also some comments from Joan Laporta, Barcelona president, who commented and said this. He was speaking a days in after Barcelona's goal was draw with Rio Vallecano. And he said, exits are still being worked on. There was still time for some incorporations into the team. So... Exits are still being worked on. That's what he said. They've had to sell, um, uh, apparently they sold 24.5% of Barca Studios um, in order to help finance and uh, at this economic lever to, uh, or lever, in order to, uh, you know, register players and stuff. They're a disgrace. They're an absolute disgrace. Apparently, yep, yeah, Arsenal are also interested in Brighton's Moises Caicedo. Uh, Ten Hag's furious with Man United over lack of transfers as well. Reportedly, he's very unhappy with the lack of movement, and it makes sense. United and PSG have apparently joined Liverpool in a race for Marcelo Brozovic. Man United set for further Adrian Rabio talks Monday. We're set to hold further talks on Monday to discuss the personal terms and finalise them. Um, Xavi says Frankie de Jong's an important player. If he ends up staying, he'll be an important player. Uh, Man United transfer business is, is held up at the moment by the De Jong stuff, really. Gary Neville slammed the Glazers, saying they don't spend any money on United and they're a disgrace, etc. Uh, hashtag Glazers out. Um, David Heyer accepts blame for Man United's loss to Brentford. Uh, that's pretty much the latest information and news we've got for you today, folks. So that's basically all the latest Man United news. If anything else comes out shortly, I'll let you know. Um, but we'll be back on later tonight as well for an evening rundown if there's any news uh, and breaking stuff. So this is quite interesting. We've just got some stats come through here from Statman Dave Rushmano. Thanks for sending this across. Penalty records in English football. Dean Henderson, nine penalties saved, 17 penalties faced, 53% penalty save percentage. David Day, a seven penalty saved, 45 penalty saved, 16% penalty save percentage. Yep, David Day is shit to be fair. Um, <laughs> David Day is shit to be fair at saving penalties. I think that's fair to say. Dean Henderson's got a very impressive record for penalties, but penalties isn't everything. I still think De Gea is better. I mean, look, you're not going to change my opinion from one game where Henderson's had a really good game for Notts Forest and De Gea's had a really shit game for United. It's only one game. So let's just calm down a bit there. But anyway, let's get into the live chat now, folks. It's time for a QA. I'm going to stick around for a few minutes. Crikey, we've already been on here for an hour and six minutes. That is mental. And by the way, we're only nine likes off of 300 likes, guys. Who's going to be that 300th liker? Let's have a little Bacon Brigade. Like Spike, Bacon Brigade, assemble and smash this video to 300 likes. Nice, nice one. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just get into the chat for a QA, and a guys. Thanks for being here. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, have your say. That's right, Fat Chinese Gaming. Cucurella used to play for us. I wish he stayed as good player. Absolutely, they got themselves a good player there, FCG. I agree. He, I would have liked to meet United, but in the end, we got Malassia in. Uh, Simon Cowie, you legend, says, Pig, we can't, we can't sack Eric Tenag. That's partly why we are in the mess, because we hire and fire managers every one of three seasons. The fact is, we're going to take four seasons to rebuild. I agree with you, Simon. What's the good in sacking him now? It's just stupid. I don't want to sell, I don't want to sack Eric Tenhag right now, bud. Um, Zay Miyassi, thank you for another super chat. He says, Ronaldo, come to us and join the Arteta revolution with our support. You will get 50 goals. Win Europa, then join another team next year. Oh my goodness me, Zay Riassi is on the good stuff again. It's only 5.26. I'm surprised, Zane. You're starting early today, bud. Wow. Fair play to you, my son, though. I mean, he's he's loving it at the moment. Arsenal Holland's a joint top, essentially. You know, enjoy it while it lasts. And it's not long until you shit the bed um, and, and struggle, I think. But then again, who knows? I mean, if you actually look at the first couple of games, Arsenal do look good, don't they? I'm very worried, mate. What's what's going on? Arsenal are getting back on track. Even Arsenal are doing things and making strides to get better at the moment. United have still got shit owners, the worst owners. Arsenal are spending money, to be fair. Last couple of summers, they spent money. Man United are, are doing absolutely awful. I mean, Zane's doing me at the moment because I just got nothing good to say, really. Man United are shit. Our owners are shit. Our players are shit. How am I supposed to defend our players? And Arsenal look decent at the moment. I mean, Arsenal... OK, let's just take it back to this, actually. It's two games in. Mikel Arteta's a pound land pep. And also, you haven't won the Champions League ever. And you still haven't won the league since 20, 2004. Yes. I feel a bit better now, guys. Fuck Arsenal. They're shite. 
There you go. Pain in my ass, he says Chris Barker. Right manager, wrong owners. Spot on, Rush Mano. Yeah, well said. Um, you said you want Glazers out there not going to sell the club. How do you get rid of the Glazers? Do you think it's not going to the stadium will help the situation? Not going to the stadium will help the situation. I mean, I do actually fat Chinese game. And so there's a, a big thing uh, supposed to happen on the next game against Liverpool, which is uh, no, the United fans are supposed to boycott the game. It's called Empty Old Trafford. Hashtag Empty Old Trafford. Search it up on Google. Search it up on Twitter, guys. Familiarize yourself with it. And do and, and Empty Old Trafford. Make a stand. Make a stand. Because it doesn't look good. It's not good for sponsors. It could affect sponsors. It could affect the commercial ability of this football club to, to generate money for the Glazers. If it's a hostile environment every single week or there's no fans, it's an empty stadium and there's protests outside the grind every, every single game. It's just going to bring the negative press on the Glazers ownership constantly and at some point surely that's got to get grating for them surely they've got to go oh you know what fuck this it's more trouble than it's worth cut our losses make a big fat profit I mean they bought this club for a couple hundred million and then loads of money loads of debt money 700 million debt money so you know they've they've uh they've they've done well just to even own this football club a leverage takeover absolute filth disgrace should have never happened and um but because of that if you actually put them a decent off on the table, three or four billion pounds, they'd probably walk, they'd probably snap your hand off. But they're only going to do that more likely as well as if their profitability becomes a lot less. So I think that the only way we can really do anything is that they're not even here. The only way you can do anything is to voice our concerns, voice our uh, opinions by protesting, protest with your feet, protest with your wallet, don't spend the money on those shite, don't give them what you, uh, you know, what they want, which is, which is money, and people say, okay, well, the the you know the match day revenue and the merchandise that only accounts for so much. It's still a significant amount, and also it affects other things as well. Like I say, if they can whore us out and get a deal for three hundred million for a shirt sponsor, well, maybe a shirt sponsor is not going to want to be associated with a fan base that knows that their owners are toxic and knows that 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 sponsorship is helping fund their disgusting ownership of the football club, and therefore their brand is actually being hurt to hundreds of millions of potential supporters and customers because. Let's face it, nobody appreciates Team Viewer. I'm not wearing the shirt actually, but Team Viewer. Nobody likes Team Viewer. Everyone thinks Team Viewer are a load of gash. It's not done Team Viewer any favors, I don't think, in terms of their, their actual perception. Maybe in terms of their overall reach, it's done a lot for them. But in terms of their perception, I think everyone thinks Team Viewer are a bunch of gash merchants who are just a bunch of glazer, glazer fucking sympathizers. You know what I mean? And, they're, and they're, their product's shite in itself. So, um, you know, and just like, sponsors don't want to be associated with that stuff and they certainly if they do want to be associated they certainly might not pay as much as a club that's all happy and rosy so it's it's hostile it's it's but it's necessary it's like nobody wants to boycott the games we want to watch our team play but it's a stand against the awful owners that own our football club to say no more we will not watch this shit anymore you know that's the reality what has Poch won? He's shite, Sadak Raman. Nothing, mate. Some fucking French Mickey Mouse League, basically, that was is, is a gimme. Um, exactly, says Susan. Ralph was talking bollocks. We need 20 players. That's madhouse. Maybe so, bud. Uh, Pochettino's boring that luster and couldn't win the Champions League with a star. So well. I don't want Poch either. Pochettino's bang average, mate. I couldn't agree more with you, my friend. Couldn't agree more with you. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, X Dippers, look at this. Matty Rush says, bloody hell, X Dippers just sent me a, a Collymore tweet. Stan Collymore tweeted, Manchester United, rest in peace, killed by ownership who put corporate over football, frittered away the inheritance of a dominant 20 years, and didn't listen to the original Green and Gold campaign when they warned of this. Sad to see. That's it. That's it. Everybody, even outsiders looking in, know what a poor do this is for United fans and, and, the, and the club. Uh, I usually buy one or two shirts in the beginning of the season. Won't spend one cent at the moment. Me too, Steve. O, hundred percent agree. Boycott the merch. Boycott the games. It's it's sad. It's sad, but that's what I think is the best for this football club right now is to try and get these glazers out as best as we can. Feels like we need Conte as Tad Bakes. Well, there you go. I mean, he would have probably done a lot better, really, than Ragnick when we had the opportunity to get Conte. And he, but the thing is, he just would have he would have not been the Glazers' cup of tea. I don't think. The next manager, he's too outspoken, etc. This is just as bad as the. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's just silly. Jams Gray. Oh God, that's a silly comment, mate. <laughs> that's a horrible comment. Same as he says, super chat piggy. Uh, we don't need a new manager. We need new players in <laughs> MFO. Uh, Rory Sheridan Fred says, I'm fit as in my dad in hospital. United fan just passed me feel for him. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Rory Sheridan. You're visiting my dad in hospital. United fan just passed. 
and the United fan just passed me feel for him. Ah, Rory Shannon, friends. I'm so sorry to hear that. Can we get some love hearts in there for you guys? I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, you know, much love. Send, send in thoughts your way. Uh, Zay Miassi, thank you. He says we will get invincibility this season, Piggy. Fancy a bet, Zane? <laughs> now, that's a bet I would take. <laughs> Whether or not Arsenal go invincible this season, that is a bet I would take, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Zay Miassi, for the super chat, bud. Appreciate you. Thank you, Gungshi, for the love hearts. Thank you, legend. Mark Nurse's pro. I have Manchester United crest on my wrist. I love these players. Don't have the passion and the love for this club. Very well said, Mark Nurse, sir. CV884. If only these players had half the passion of a lot of people in this fan base, uh, in, in, in this live chat. The only way the Glazers will leave is if they get the money they want. That's the only way. Yeah, true. It's just too profitable for them. Um, and Alicia says, I've just uh, gotten my wife into football, and even she's disappointed in how bad United have started. Great comment. That's it. It's disgusting, isn't it? Zane payouts on bets isn't great, says Rushmano. <laughs> oh, dear. My condolences, Rory, says Mark Nurse. Kate Connect says, fuck you, Glazers. Burn in hell. Crikey, my son. More chance of beating the Gooners to sick this season. Um, okay, so, right, guys. Um, you know, it's a disgrace. The Glazers are ruining this football club. Let's just get some hashtag Glazers out. Empty Old Trafford for the Liverpool game. Boycott the merch. Boycott the ownership. Boycott the fucking games at the moment. That's the way it's got to be, I'm afraid. That's how I feel. Um, fuck the Glazers. Get them out of this club. And good riddance to those toss pots. We need a, a consortium. We do need to get behind, like, Michael Knighton, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Try and hope that these guys, you know, can 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 do something. Or certainly Sir Jim Rick Ratcliffe, that maybe he can buy the club. That would be amazing. Uh, Pig, we love United. This is our home and our life. Love United forever, says Sadik Roman. Spot on. Well said. That's it. We just need to get the gas owners out, and we've got a brilliant football club. We're going to wrap this up then, guys, but thank you so much to every one of you that's tuned in. We've got 324 likes on this stream. That is absolutely brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for dropping a like. Seriously. Can we get 350? Is there 20, 20 legends who haven't hit the like? Smash a like before you go, and also hit the subscribe button if you're new to this channel. We're on here every day giving you the updates. We'll probably be back on tonight around about 9-ish. Sorry there was no FIFA last night, but there will be FIFA tonight. Um, so we'll give you the United news later if there's anything breaking. And, uh, and of course, FIFA late, late night as well. We've got a lot of Champs games to play. So come back later on about 11 p.m. for that and 9 p.m. for a potential United news video also. But thanks for watching this one. Come back after this is finished. Get your thoughts and opinions in the uh, comment section after it's finished. Um, please do come back and have your say. I um, want to say thanks, everyone, for retweeting the tweet as well. Let me just go and see who's retweeted that. There's actually nine legends who retweeted it. Tap Fuma, Vincent Bullock, Anthony Long, Aaron Homeyard, Stephen Braun, Transfers underscore UTD, Matt Gwinner, and Liam Ward. Thank you, legends, for retweeting on Twitter. Once again, my Twitter's at the top of the live chat. Go and give us a follow. Go and give us a retweet. I'll give you a follow back if I'm not already. And um, also follow us on Instagram at Flying Pig United, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, Flying Pig United, all of those. And just thank you for being here, folks. Check out the website, unitedflyinghigh.com as well. And have a great day, guys. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. By the Hoop Man, Compost Smurf, CV, Chris Barker, Simon Cami, Rob, the Hoop Man, Jim Watkins, Lucky Singh, Vinny Bullock, Rush, Rush Mano, Sidic Rahman, Chris, Lucky, everyone, and all the legends of the chat, everyone who's out there lurking. Thanks for tuning in. All the channel members in green with the badges next to their names. Thank you also for supporting the show. You're a bunch of legends, guys. Share this around, guys. We're nearly at 63,000 subscribers. Let's go. Seriously, 62.9K is an insane achievement over this last week or so. To, to, to the last couple of days it's gone up mad so thank you everyone for helping us grow around here on, on, on youtube and um you know the target the, the start of the year for everybody who doesn't know was seventy thousand subscribers and we're on our way to getting that guys so you know let's be having you thank you everyone for being here shout out to the greatest community and the greatest supporters in the land you guys the, aka the bacon brigade the gammon gang the hamada the sausage squadron thank you all for being here have a great day guys that's it from me much love to all the moderators as well for moderating the live chat rushy for giving us all the updates throughout the show as well you're a legend check out his twitter page transfers underscore utd for united updates and thank you all the mods like gang she on the legends all the members like kate connect jim watkins chris barker vinnie bullock and everybody for being here that's it for me guys stay classy have a good one back later on keep a lookout click that bell so you receive notifications smash that subscribe Chuck a like on it before you leave and have yourselves a bloody good one. Come on, United. Sort your pig and lives out. Glazers out there are fucking cancer. Goodbye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, when the seagulls follow the trawler. Is this is because they sink sardines.
will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. Sue! Glazers out, shithouses! <laughs> <laughs>